Hi guys, welcome back to Vijvik channel. So we will be continuing our veterinary medicine series. So the next topic is septicemia. So we are all familiar with this topic septicemia and sepsis. So to learn more about septicemia and sepsis, first of all, we should learn the basic ideology of septicemia and basic idea and basic things about sepsis. So please subscribe this channel and hit the bell button for more updates. So moving to the introductory part. Septicemia is the acute invasion of the systemic circulation by pathogenic bacteria which may cause sepsis or septic shock. If the infection is not adequately controlled, the bacteria will be localizing in many organs and the organ will stop its functioning. So sepsis is a potentially life-threatening condition caused by body's response to an infection. So whenever a pathogenic bacteria is coming to the body and controlling the vital organs, the body will start work against the bacteria by stopping the, of the organ or will be potentially acting against the organ because the organ is completely localized by the bacteria. So sepsis is potentially life threatening. So bacteremia is different from septicemia. So there are many points of differentiation of bacteremia and septicemia. So we can just move on to that. That is bacteremia is not accompanied by sepsis. So septicemia will be always accompanied by sepsis. So septic shock is very common in septicemia. Whereas in bacteria, it is not common. Bacteria are present in the blood only for transient periods and do not produce clinical signs in case of bacteria. But septicemia, bacteria are present in the blood for longer period and they are accompanied by clinical signs. So bacteria, in example, that is after rectal examination, a clinically unimportant bacteria occurs if the mucosal integrity is disturbed. But in case of septicemia, the polysepticemia and tracts pastoralosis and salmonellosis, bacteria are present throughout the course of the disease and they will be inducing a septic shock and that can even lead to death. So the presence of a superficial or deep abscess is not a septicemic condition and do not produce septicemia as long as the lesion is localized. Pathological change is seen only in the local area or local tissue that are affected and bacteria are not present in the systemic circulation. Moving to the etiology, gram-negative bacteria organisms, that is the Manemia, Hemolytica, Salmonella species, E. coli, Klebsiella species, they are all, we are all familiar with them. Next is the gram-positive bacterial organism, that is the Bacillus anthraxis, alpha hemolytic Streptococcus, Streptococcus suis type 1, Acnobacillus equuli or Acnobacillus lignorasi, Erysipelocrix insidiosa. So viral organisms, that is the bovine viral diarrhea, BVD organism, bovine malignant catarrhal and classical swine fever. So secondary septicemia, the defects in immune system or immune suppression due to various causes can lead to secondary septicemia. So moving to the epidemiology of septicemia. Animals of all ages are affected. Young animals are more susceptible to the neonatal septicemia because their immune system will be very fragile and they will be familiarizing the environment. So they cannot act more wisely to the body's imperfections. There is a chance of death in neonatal septicemia. It is very high. So moving to the pathogenesis. The pathogenesis is due to the toxins produced by the bacteria and the disseminated intravascular coagulation which is happening inside the vessel. Bacteria produce exotoxins or endotoxins. These toxins initiate an inflammatory response through several biochemical mediators and also by making a fever in the host body. So rapid multiplication and spread of pathogens to different body tissues can lead to widespread inflammatory response called CIS or systemic inflammatory response syndrome. So whenever the bacteria is multiplicating at a higher rate, they will be transported to each and every part of the system by the blood and they will be producing widespread inflammatory response or wide flood inflammatory reactions throughout the body and we will be calling it as systemic inflammatory response syndrome. So 
the same general principle apply to viremia except that toxins are not produced by the virus they actually the virus will be the main causative agent in case of sirs so moving to the disseminated intravascular coagulation so it is the coagulation of blood within the blood vessels it is seen in several septicemia severe septicemia and many viral diseases are very familiar for the dic so bacterial cell walls antigen antibody complexes endotoxin circulating in the blood they injure the vascular intima this initiates platelet adhesion and formation of platelet thrombi widespread coagulation within the vessels deplete platelets as well as coagulation factors and result in hemorrhagic diathesis so we are all familiar with the blue tongue disease and classical swine fever so disseminated intravascular coagulation is very common in those other pathogenic effects are localization in organs development of carrier status and transplantal infection so moving to the clinical findings so in septicemia animal will become dull and weak other important signs are rise in body temperature respiratory distress tachycardia tachypnea hypotension cold extremities and dehydration so submucal hemorrhage submucosal hemorrhages under the conjunctiva and in the mucosa of the mouth and vulva and sub epidermal hemorrhages are seen when the bacteria localize in organs such as joints heart valves meningitis etc the animal shows specific signs of the organ involved in severe case of septicemia the animal becomes laterally laterally recumbent and they will die soon so moving to the clinical pathology hemogram we will be completely analyzing the blood count the leukopenia or the leukocytosis will be seen we will be going for the complete blood count following platelet counts prothrombin and fibrinogen values indicates consumption coagulopathy we will be moving for the blood culture and we will be finding which organism has produced the change examination of other body fluids if required that is acidic fluid synovial fluid etc going to the diagnosis diagnosis is based on history clinical signs and laboratory findings post mortem lesions include sub mucus and sub serous hemorrhages that may be seen in the internal organs so moving to the treatment so fluids first of all we need to maintain the electrolytic acid base balance in the body if at all the fluid content or the acid base or the electrolytic osmolality is not maintained that can lead to hypovolemic shock so first of all we should always give fluid next is antimicrobials so some bacteria has gained entry into the body and they started producing septicemic condition so after finding which bacteria it is we will be giving the antimicrobial drug which will be acting against the bacteria and that will be either killing or inhibiting the bacterial actions so next is b complex vitamins that is actually the liver should work very properly and we need more vitamins and minerals in a proper ratio to work as a system next is other supportive therapy nsaids are also used with caution because nsaids will be decreasing the pain or they will be decreasing the pain and they can even decrease the temperature and all but sometimes they are having the bleeding tendency will be increased by the some nsaids so be cautious, cautious with the nsaids so the differentials is actually toxemia hyperthermia and all disease characterized by fever almost all viral disease they will be having a septicemic condition always check the body temperature blood pressure respiratory rate heart rate end organ damage in case of end organ damage you will have to check for circulatory overload and whether dic is forming decreased urine output pale cold and clammy skin and extremities altered sensorium and confusion so that means what cerebral perfusion is low brain is not working properly that means uh, it's it's going to a bad stage so you should have to check these five things regularly whenever you are getting any contact with the uh, animal which is in the septic condition or in any shock and all so thank you guys